start. Um, I'd rather take up a little bit of time at the end and figure it out quickly enough. that just came in and did not get a card, I've got more. I can pass those out to anybody uh, yet. Somebody in the back of the room, I don't mean to be uninviting, but I like to try and talk loud, and I don't want anyone that needs to come in. They obviously, they can continue to come in, but if we can close, somebody can close the doors. Thank you very much. Well, uh, it's 8.30, right? Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. My name is Lars. Um, this is something that I am incredibly passionate about, and I think it's something that's very important to talk to, and it's exactly why I went to U.S. Cross and applied to be able to be a speaker, and was very grateful and very lucky that they uh, said yes uh, to my application. Uh, this is uh, high quality six screen, uh, undervalued and overlooked, and, and I think it's long been since time to change that, but also it's just an ongoing process that uh, needs to happen. Um, if you haven't already done so, this helps me. This helps you us across being able to, if you haven't already signed into, uh, like, you know, registered for the US Cross app, or the uh, CrowdPress, or whatever the, the actual uh, application that they're using, uh, and sign in and check in. That, that helps me. That helps you us across. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I started playing lacrosse uh, as a junior in high school in 1999. Uh, I went to Springfield College, uh, played lacrosse at Springfield College. I was not recruited. Uh, for my entire professional life, I have been involved in college lacrosse, uh, coaching at a number of different uh, places, Division 1, 2, and 3, both men's and women's lacrosse. Uh, currently, I am the Director of uh, Lacrosse Operations at Harvard Men's Lacrosse, and also the Assistant Coach and Equipment Manager for the Boston Cannons. Uh, amongst a laundry list of schools that I have uh, strung for, two of the, uh, my, my, the, my proudest moments are having uh, at least a lot to do with what sticks are being used on the last two Division I men's national championship teams, Virginia and, uh, and Yale. Uh, and there's a number of other schools and, and lots of uh, individuals. Uh, through my website and through my Instagram, I reach out to a lot of people and I have a lot of people who reach out to me about the questions, uh, but also I I provide the service of being able to spring sticks for uh, individuals, for high school teams, club teams, college teams. Uh, it's something that I, I'm a huge student. Uh, I love it. I can't get enough of it. Um, just now that every, everyone is here, a, a number of people had asked, uh, I know I have a whole lot of men's sticks up, up here. Uh, my women's sticks are actually at the STX booth right now, uh, being used uh, on shafts for uh, that, that people can go up and, and demo and use. Uh, there's a couple of all white ones, and there's one really nice uh, a white uh, vapor, a light one, the light lunar fly with all yellow string and all yellow mesh. Uh, by all means, go to the STX booth at some point today. Um, <coughs> uh, but this, and as much as I have uh, just a whole bunch of men's sticks up here, this today is not so much about how to string sticks, because there's not enough time uh, to, in, in one hour or even for a number of hours to be able to express all the stuff that I would want to if that were a chance, if I had a chance to teach that class. This is more about understanding that we need to have better strong sticks. Uh, 
at, at every single one. And, and, and that's for men's across, that's women's across, um, everywhere. Uh, uh, Lars Tiffany is, is a close friend of mine. There are two Larses in, in, in College Across. Uh, I have the pleasure and the honor of being able to work with uh, the other Lars in College Across at, New, at Brown University in 2016 uh, when we were lucky enough to be able to go to the, all the way we lost to uh, Maryland in, a, in overtime in the semifinals, uh, actually here in Philadelphia. Uh, so being able to be with him, if anyone had listened to him speak last night or if you know anything about him, this is an extremely large quote. Uh, he goes about things. Uh, he, he's a great guy, and I'm very lucky to be able to work with him. And so when he left Brown to go to Virginia, I was very lucky to be able to continue uh, working for him in that respect to be able to help the teams out uh, with the spring. Um, my ultimate goal is to uh, like to be in, this is you know this right here is one big huge step forward for me, but I want to be able to have a tangible impact on sport uh, on the whole by shedding light on, on this aspect of the game because I don't think it is talked about enough. Uh, and we're, with everything that's going on in the sport today, I think it's high time that we start talking about it. And I know it's going to take uh, a lot of time, especially women's cross with mesh. has only been around for a very short period of time. Only the last couple of years has been allowed. It, it's opening up whole new worlds. With everything that's going on in technology, with, with, with mesh and heads today, it's opening up, opening up whole new worlds of what kids are capable of doing, what kids are capable of doing, uh, and again, that's at every single level. That's you know, six-year-olds to sixty-year-olds. Some of the things that uh, I'm going to go over uh, today, uh, some of my core principles of what I try to do when I string. I have some questions for all of you. Uh, a number of myths that I have heard over the years, talking to players and talking to parents. Uh, what is whip? That's the absolute bane of my existence. Trying to talk about that word. Uh, what I think coaches need to know and need to be able to do, uh, understanding some of the materials, uh, maintenance and upkeep uh, the, of what should be done once you, you have a stick that you like, uh, a number of things to remember, and then at the very end, I've got uh, some show and tell that we'll all talk about along the way. Uh, from a core principle standpoint, uh, when I'm thinking about stringing sticks, and it could be, again, from a six-year-old to a 20-year-old to a 60-year-old, I'm obsessive about trying to find something that will drive and increase performance. It will maintain high performance and increase it. Uh, for different styles of stringing, and, and before, uh, after we get through here, uh, I'd love for people to continue to come up and look at this. There's a number of styles here that work for, specifically for mesh, because that's what I work with mostly on men's and women's sticks. Uh, whatever kind of style of stringing that works, try and make a pocket that works specifically for one person, I, I want to try and find a do it. I would try to find a way to do it. Uh, if there's something that hinders performance, be it a string that doesn't work, uh, heads that don't work, a lot of the older heads don't are, aren't um, don't work well enough for what we're trying to do today. If something isn't, if the head isn't stiff enough, it's a, if it's a noodle, uh, if the mesh is bad, anything like that, I try to steer clear of it. And if there are things that kind of don't hurt and don't help, uh, I can use it if I if it works and if it's convenient. Otherwise, I, I don't do it. Uh, and Dying heads. I don't have any uh, dyed heads up here. There's a number of fantastic and incredibly talented people who are here at FanFest. A number of them are, are, are close friends of mine because they also string six. Uh, I've never dyed a head in my life. Uh, and and prim the primary reason is because dying heads doesn't really help with how the stick performs. It's awesome. It helps kids feel good. They like it. They like fun color. They like all this, the, the fun colored mesh, and that's great. But just so you understand, my thought process. Um, this is really the, the most important thing when actually shaping a pocket for people, and I will continue to get to, to talk about what's important for individuals uh, as we go along. Uh, and this is probably the most specific thing that I'll actually talk about stringing today, is assuming you have your, your top string set up correctly, this is for every, any head, for guys and for girls, uh, how you string your side balls dictate, dictates the shape of the pocket. The shape of the pocket dictates how the ball comes out, how the ball releases from the pocket. Good shapes throw well. Bad shapes do not throw well and will not perform well. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about that more as we go. Um, when I'm stringing ahead for someone specifically, and this doesn't matter if it's uh, all American men, all American women, or six year olds, 10 year olds, or someone who has never, a 30-year-old who has never played before, 
but is excited and wants to get a part of it, um, I am taking these three primary things into <laughs> consideration. What position they play, how, how they play that position, and the mechanics that they already have. All of those things, all of those three things go together towards me creating a pocket specifically for how a person plays. Uh, professionally strong head should be done with a goal in mind to make a player better. That, it, it's, it sounds simple enough, but uh, you'd be surprised in the number of conversations I've had with people who don't think about that and how important that specific piece of the there is. Uh, and I'll, I'll harp on this throughout the entire talk. The player has to change their mechanics. from If they have a stick or something that they've liked using for a long time you get, and they get something new, and they have to significantly change what they have been doing in the past to figure out how to use a stick, in my obsessive brain, I don't think the stick was strung properly specifically for that one person. It might be perfect for somebody else, but if I'm stringing for you, I want to make sure that it's set up properly for you, not for your friend. He might love it, and you might hate it, and I would say, trade it, I'll do another one. But that's, like I said, there's it's a general rule, there are exceptions. Uh, let's see, questions, okay, uh, raise your hand if, Raise your hand if you string sticks. Doesn't matter whether it's for yourself or for anybody else. Excellent, fantastic, thank you very much. I do not, do not fully understand the impact you were able to have on the people around you. Uh, let's see, how many of you ever had players who've had a stick that all of a sudden, they've, they've got it, they've been using it, it's fine, and then in wet weather, it changes how it performs? Excellent, that is exactly what I expect. Um, how many of you ever had a, a player who has said something to the effect of, they bring up, they have a brand new stick, they have something that's perfect, they love it, and over the course of the next day, a couple of days, or a week or two, all of a sudden it does not, it's not the same. You see them fixing the strings, they, they sit down, they, they in the middle of practice. How many of you have ever seen that happen? Excellent. Pretty much the same group of people have, well, those who didn't string, didn't obviously raise their hand in the beginning. That's, honestly, that's exactly what I expected. That's exactly the same answers that I've got any time I've ever had an audience like this and ask that question. It is remarkable how many players do not use something that is broken in properly, that's just stretched out, and will uh, operate and, and perform at a high level, regardless of how old they are, um, in any weather conditions. Uh, I've set all these up, so as you understand, as you read them, and I'll go through all of them, uh, I've set it up so that I can say no, 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 all the way through. Um, do you need shooters? Uh, no, absolutely not. If there are a number of the six that you see up here that have shooting strings, most of them do not. Uh, I am personally, I am team no shooters uh, most of the time. You don't need, if you string a pro pocket correctly, it has good shape and it holds up, you, sh it, you should need them. If you prefer to, to feel the ball coming off the shooters and off the plastic when you throw, that's when you can use shooters. Shooters should be for fine tuning how the ball comes out of the stick and for adjusting for the proper, proper amount of field, you don't need it. Um, shooters are the only way to control whip, and we'll talk about that, uh, and how the stick throws. Again, no, sidewalls dictate the shape of the pocket, the shape dictates how the pocket throws. Uh, my mesh is weatherproof, waterproof, hydrophobic, uh, any or other fun words that I can't pronounce and will perform exactly the same in wet weather or bad weather. These are the things that are typically posted on the back of the box that you're buying your mesh in. It's absolutely untrue. You have, if you have uh, the two elements of the ball and the stick, and you introduce a third element that comes in between those two, it will change the relationship between those two. And so it, you can have a perfect pocket that is, is broken in correctly. If it gets wet, it is going to change. The goal, my goal, and what I believe should be the goal of stringers when they string a pocket is to make it so that that, sh that, that difference is as indistinguishable as possible. Meaning that you can, you don't have to worry about if it's wet, stick gets wet. You do not have to think. You, you, we don't want guy, players thinking when they're out there on the field. They don't have to think about what they need to do differently because the ball and their stick is wet and they're not playing. We want them to focus on everything that they've practiced over all the time uh, that they've been playing, and just it, it needs to just work. Uh, breaking your pocket takes many days or weeks. Again, absolutely correct. As we get to the at the very end, I'll show you that it takes approximately about 30 seconds for me to do everything that I need to do to make sure the mesh is stretched out. Uh, you need to return to your stringer for regular <coughs> maintenance. Uh, this, it, 
if you've got a stick, you have to go back to the person who strung it, assuming you you yourself did not do it on a regular basis. I, I don't I don't think it was strung properly, at least for that individual. There are little things that, that might happen where you might need to be able to do it, but for the most part, the, the sticks that I string for the, the kids that I coach, uh, they don't typically come back to me with issues on a regular basis. Uh, pocket placement doesn't matter for youth players. The younger they start, the, the less important it is, but it is important. Uh, you don't want to have uh, a defenseman who is carrying his stick horizontally all the time with a pocket that's really low. Uh, you don't want uh, an attackman who's carrying uh, an attackman or an attacker that's carrying it. Typically, they carry the stick straight up and down to have a pocket where the ball wants to sit up high. It's, it needs, as they start playing after a few years, even if they're seven or eight years old, it's important to understand that they need to have something that's specific to their position and how they play. Uh, you don't need to replace your mesh until something breaks. Uh, another question, raise your hand if you've ever had a stick where you left the mesh. You didn't change anything, you didn't get it restrung until either the stick broke or the mesh broke or anything like that and it was in there for multiple years. Look around, keep the, ra keep the hands raised up. It, there's no real problem with that, but this isn't because I want to be the guy that you have to come to on a regular basis to uh, string sticks. I'm doing this purely from a performance standpoint. The, there is a genuine lifespan to the stick and to the mesh. Uh, I have seen, uh, through coaching uh, women's across specifically, I've seen young ladies that come out and they've got sticks and I'm like, how long have you had this? And they're playing, they're, these are girls in high school who are trying to get recruited to play in college and they have a stick that they got in middle school. Uh, to me, I'm just, I can't say all the things that I'm just blown away about, but I, I, if you want to be able to play at a high level, or if, you, if you're coaching and you want your kids to be able to play at a high level or execute at a high level, these uh, sticks don't break. And women's across, the reason why everything is more expensive is because it doesn't break as much, because it's less of a contact game. That doesn't mean that the sticks will, or like at least the stringing will last as long. I would recommend at least once a year. Uh, typically, like for myself, the, what I charge when I ask people to string, if they give me the mesh, it's $25 for labor. Uh, and then if they're adding mesh, it's typically the cost of the, the retail cost of the mesh is what I charge. That's just about uh, just about what most of the stores that I've ever been into is charging. It's, it's worth it for how well it will continue to perform. And at a certain point, the lifespan of the stick and the lifespan of the mesh just kind of it drops off. And then you're just trying to figure out what you can do with something that's not performing as well. So that's why I recommend on, on more so for the men's side. Um, and as they're getting older, as, as guys are getting older and, and the women, as they're getting older and they're playing harder and they're putting more stress on everything, the, how long it's going to last will shorten. And uh, as many of us understand, they don't make things the way that they used to. And so they don't typically last as long, but it, at least once a year would be a recommendation. Uh, and for women's lacrosse specifically, men, we don't really talk about this, but the sweet spot is one specific, actual specific spot in the head. Most of the heads that are being uh, made by the manufacturers today in women's lacrosse have what they call a sweet spot. The ball is going to stay in the sweet spot. It, there's, most of those heads are set up so that the ball will be held up high, higher in the stick. And that is, in the last couple of years, that has been a massive change from the last 20 or 30 years, however long they've been making women's across heads, plastic ones, leading up to the last couple of years. The way everything, specifically with the stringing, everything was set up so that the ball would be sitting on the plastic, and so they would be cradling. When I first started coaching and learning women's across, this is one shoulder to shoulder. This is, how the, the, this is how I was watching coaches teach young women and even older women, this is how they were going to uh, create. And now that the ball the, the, the wants to be, or the, the sticks are set up so the pocket is going to be up higher, women have to learn how to have to change how they are created. So they can still go like this, but now that they can bring their stick a little bit more off to the side, and whether or not you want your players to do that is up to you and how the players play, but that's what the sticks are designed to do. All I'm saying here for this, it's not one specific spot. Young ladies, even though their sticks are set up for a certain way, they can have, uh, they still, you still need to be able to vary where the ball is going to sit for them because it's not just one single place in the stick, regardless of what, my personal opinion, it's regardless of what the manufacturers might try and tell you. 
what is whip? I absolutely hate this word. Raise your hand if you ever heard someone talk about whip. My stick has whip. Okay? Uh, that's everybody. That's what I thought. Uh, I have, <laughs> this is one of my personal uh, diatribes. I, I, I ask a lot of people what they mean about it or what, they, what it means to them, and I've gotten uh, so many different answers across the board, and everybody has an idea of what it means, and nobody really knows what it means. Uh, I'm not going to read off exactly what this is. Uh, by all means, please take a picture of it, so if you want to think about it later. Uh, the, the bottom two, the two large paragraphs, and then specifically the one in black, uh, when I was in grad school, I had the opportunity to write a paper about it. So my graduate school research paper was defining the term. The black at the bottom, which is extremely specific and difficult to understand, I understand, I get it. That was literally the best that I could come up with from everything that I learned doing all of the talking to, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of stringers and specifically dozens of coaches, uh, guys who have been in college across for uh, a long time. Nobody really gets it. I personally, Ryan, uh, a good friend of mine who is uh, actually a member of uh, working for U.S. Across, I would love to be the guy who spearheads the effort to try and define this term. Uh, that would that would be a, a that's a hard life goal for me. Uh, I, I would love to get to the point for any anybody that golfs in here. Uh, there's no arguing about what a hook and what a slice is. I don't play golf, actually play golf enough, I just know one goes one way and one goes the other, and there is no argument about it. It is a near defined term. I would love for this to be a defined term. What I actually talk about is, does the stick throw easy? And then this, this is as much a, uh, a coaching piece as a stringing piece, that they go hand in hand here. But if I ask, if, if I ask does the stick throw easy for you? That's a, a much easier way for kids and, and coaches and parents to understand of, okay, that's a, it's typically a yes or a no. And if it's not a hard yes right away, be like, yes, absolutely, it's easy to throw with. Bells go off in my head because I'm like, okay, what can we do to make the stick throw easier? Um, and these are two, these are the questions that are typically, that go along with it. And these are a lot of what I've learned from a lot of questions I've asked about whip is does the stick throw high or the ball come out too early? Or does the stick throw down or the ball come out too late? Because usually when someone's, oh, like, I've got too much whip in my stick, a lot of times when people say that, the ball's coming down, it goes down, uh, down at the ground. And as I had said earlier, if, they, if, a, if a player has a stick that they love and they have to change to something else for some reason and they have to alter their mechanics to throw with it, I, I want to be able to figure out how to make an adjustment, and I'll talk about adjustments later, to, you know, when I ask these questions and they say it's still throwing up or throwing down, how do I change that so that, that stick specifically works for that player? Uh, what coaches need to know? What are the things that, as a coach myself, and what I want to be able to impress upon everyone here and uh, anyone who ever gets to watch this video, hopefully the battery doesn't run out, uh, high quality stick training is available to you and to your team. Whether it be me, uh, there is a uh, there are a ton of talented stringers in the other room, uh, in the in FanFest that that you sell string stick stringing as a service. Uh, there are a lot of times you hopefully uh, everyone here uh, I don't think so, but hopefully everybody here has a, a store a, a lacrosse specific store that has young men or women that can string sticks. They, that, that's something that's available to you. Uh, just. Buying a stick off the rack is uh, makes my heart break. Because, and I'll talk about uh, factory strong sticks in a little bit. But having an awesome stick, an absolutely fantastic stick that changes how you play and how you think about the sport is something that everybody can have. Um, let's see, coaches, you do not need to know how, uh, who strings the sticks, but you, or you do not need to know how to string sticks yourself. If you don't, that's fine. But I think it's important to tell your, your players that they should get it strung and they should either do it themselves or find someone to do it well for them. Uh, but you should also pay attention to who it is. So if you're a coach and you see a number of your players <coughs> come and then all of a sudden a whole bunch of kids have brand new sticks and their sticks are not throwing properly, you find out, okay, they were all done by a specific person, maybe try to tell them not to go back to that person. Conversely, if there's a whole bunch of kids show up with new sticks and they all are awesome and their other kids on the team are trying them out, it's by all means, you know, try and encourage them to go to more players to go get a stick strung by someone who knows what they're doing and that will help your players and help your product. Uh, when a player sticks for themselves or someone else, or whether a player sticks for himself or someone else, uh, their stick is their own responsibility. 
if I spring a stick for your son or daughter, uh, I want to, after I pass that stick off, like, that stick is no longer my own. I want to I, I want to hear about how it works. I'm going to assume that it's going to continue to work well. If it doesn't, personally, I would want to hear about it. But if, if you don't live anywhere near me and I can't make those adjustments, it's going to be a conversation over the phone. We're going to talk via Instagram or something because I want to be able to help that person make the adjustments they need to. As I said, or as I will continue to talk about, I want to do all of my homework and talk to the player about their position and how they play so that I'm doing my best to give them something they're going to love. But that stick is no longer, like, the upkeep of that stick is no longer my responsibility once they take ownership of it. Uh, and even all that being said, coaches, I think it's, as a coach myself, I think it's important to make sure that you are, at the very least, reminding your players that they need to have the proper equipment. If they've got a stick that's two or three years old, whether it's guys or girls, if it works, great, but at some point, uh, they're probably going to need something new, and prior proper planning prevents poor performance. Uh, you do not have to know how to string to be able to impress upon your players, that having a, an awesome setup can lead to increased performance, touch upon that. Uh, and if you are not talking to your players about stick stringing, I can almost guarantee you that there's half of every team that I've ever talked to is completely indifferent. They just know that they've got a stick that works and they don't care, they're not invested in stick stringing. Uh, and those are, the, those are the kids when I go to a team, it could be Syracuse, it could be Maryland, it could be Virginia, uh, it could be a, a sixth grade team that I'm working with where half the team has never played lacrosse before. Any team that I've ever talked to, there's half the team that just doesn't care. They just they want to know, they want to stick, they want to know what works, they're, like, they're good with it, they figure it out. Uh, and uh, those are the kids, those are the players that having an awesome setup can have the most impact upon. So if you're not talking to your players about this, then you're letting your players and some of their indifference determine how well your team performs. Uh, hot takes. Uh, with the advances in stick technology, a player needs a week or two to break in their stick if it wasn't stuck properly, as I touched upon in the myths. This is not true. If this, uh, a great 98% of the break-in process can happen, and, and with me, happens before I give players, uh, whoops, before I give them sticks. Uh, as I said, no matter uh, what the manufacturer says, the relationship between the mesh and the ball, if the ball, if, the, if it's wet weather, things are going to change, but as a stringer, it's my job to make sure that they have a stick that doesn't change, and as a coach, it's my job to make sure that they have, they are practicing with a stick that can play in wet weather to make sure we would, because we would play games. Uh, if a player stick throws remarkably different in adverse conditions, as I've touched upon, uh, recommendations for all, all coaches. Everyone, raise your hand if you coach teams and you're here to try and help yourself. Oh, fantastic. I absolutely love it. This is something that I have done for a number of years. Uh, I think you should check someone's stick depth on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be every player, but pick a new player, say like you do this once a day, and have an accountability piece built into it. Say, okay guys, or young ladies, okay ladies, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick one stick at random, you have no idea when, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna do a stick check. I'm gonna have the ball, if the ball rolls out, the ball doesn't get stuck, the ball in, in the pocket is of an appropriate depth, great, you give it back to that player, you continue doing it, or go on to the next drill, or do the drill that you were doing. I believe that it's the kind of thing where if you find a stick that it's illegal, get everybody on the line. Because it's not one, if one person gets an illegal stick, uh, if it's a, it's a legal stick after a goal, the goal gets taken back. That hurts the entire team, that hurts everybody. And typically somebody is going to be, uh, as somebody has a penalty and you're gonna go man down. Uh, so I, I've done that on a regular basis because I want players to, to string legal sticks. With everything you can do with the new heads and the new mesh and everything, uh, as a stringer specifically, it, it, as I said at the very beginning, it's a whole new world of what you are, what players are capable of accomplishing on the field. Uh, but I, I string all my sticks to be legal. I string them so that they can be adjusted. So if by all means, if for whatever reason something changes, they can adjust quick and easy adjustments can be made upon the stick so that it will no longer be legal. Also, as I was saying about uh, with water, practicing with your sticks being wet. If you have a five gallon bucket that costs a buck fifty at Home Depot, fill that thing up, everybody dunks their stick in it, whether it's just guys or girls, whether it's traditional or not. You are probably gonna play at some point. I don't know anybody, who, who here, raise your hand in here if you play 
every single time you play, games and practices, indoor, climate controlled environment. Exactly. Uh, everyone has played, typically everyone's played and coached in wet weather, and as, I, as everyone raised their hand earlier, everyone has played it or had a team and had a practice where kids are playing and it gets wet and their sticks are thrown all over the place because they weren't strung well enough. Uh, but having a bucket of water, especially on a nice day, to be able to just, everyone goes in, dunks it two, one, two, three times throughout the course of a practice, they're not going to like it, but they're going to appreciate it. They're going to say thank you when it comes to game day and it actually is wet and they don't have to worry about how their stick is going to perform because they practiced and prepared for <laughs> wet weather. Um, we, I, I've said this already, to achieve the highest level of performance, you need to be able to have sticks that are set up very specifically for a player's position, a player's play style, and player's mechanics. In the women's game, uh, the draw stick is set up completely different from any other field stick. It, there are, have been a number of different advances. I actually got to see the, uh, the new gate uh, women's draw head, which I'm very excited about to string because it looks like that, that can, one of the first sticks that really can be used uh, to a high level on the draw, but also does not need to be, the, the player does not need to run over to the, to, to the box, hand their, the, the draw stick off and pick up their field stick and run back on the field. Um, for goalies, for men's and women's across, for both sides, it, generally speaking, it's the same thing. The mechanics are, are relatively the same. For, uh, as I said at the very beginning, attackmen that like carrying their stick, on the men's game, they like carrying their stick straight up and down. I wouldn't give that player a pocket that sits, the ball sits up high. There are very specific things that I do for face-off sticks so that, uh, for, in the men's game, so that the mesh of the string doesn't get caught up with the ball and it's easier to get the ball out of the back of the stick after someone has won the clamp. If, if all of these things very specifically need to be dialed in for a specific player and how they play. The older they get and the higher levels that they play, the even more important that it becomes. Factory strung sticks. Uh, I have two here that I'll show off a little bit later. Typically, this is something that you're getting at, uh, like playing against sports, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, the big box sports stores. Uh, most specifically, a lot of the, the, the major brands like the STX and the Warriors, if they've got a factory strung stick, it is being strung somewhere overseas, uh, typically where the heads are being uh, made, injection molded. Uh, it's typically being strung by someone who doesn't know anything about the cross. It's, they're getting paid by the hour, by the stick, and it's, those are not good for uh, performance. Usually lacrosse specific stores will not have them. Uh, I know a number of my friends who work uh, at like Lacrosse Limited, for, uh, for example, if they get factory strung sticks from a manufacturer, typically they'll gut them and they'll put uh, some level of, uh, of a custom strung, they'll, they'll string, they'll restring them in the store and then they'll typically put them up. Um, there are a few exceptions to uh, where I would say it is, a, it is not a terrible idea to go buy factory strung sticks. Uh, how many how many people in here are from some area that is not uh, immediately on the East Coast? Excellent. How many? Great. How many of you ever had your players show up to practice and the tag is still on the stick? <laughs> okay. Um, th literally, this is exactly why I asked to be able to stand here and, and speak to you because those sticks they're done for speed. If, if I'm getting paid by how many sticks that I string, I'm going to do it as fast as possible. One of my, the, the questions that I get the most from uh, young boys and young girls is they say, how long does it take you to string a stick? How, how fast can you do it? And I, my, my go-to answer is as long as it takes to make it absolutely possible. And I don't know what that is. There, there's no set up thing. If I have 10 sticks to do and 10 pieces of mesh and I can do all of the exact same, I can kind of zone out a little bit. It's copy and paste. I can get through them in 12 to 15 minutes ahead. If it's a head or a piece of mesh that I've never used before, I'm going to sit there for three hours and do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Especially for some of the newer ones that I know that I'm going to be doing a lot for people, I don't want to have the third time I've strung that particular head be the first time I give it to somebody else. I want to get through different pieces of mesh and I want to make sure that I know what to do with it. So the exceptions are for when you have a, a factory strung stick is uh, String King, uh, I, I know the guys that started that company, they went to Bowdoin, I was playing against Bowdoin, I coached against Bowdoin, and those guys were uh, actually when they were student athletes. Their, their factory strung sticks are by far, in my opinion, the best factory strung sticks you can buy. 
They are strong in the United States. They're somewhere in, in California. The people that are doing them are play lacrosse. They have an appreciation for it. And on that level alone, I give them a, a recommendation. But I really do believe that the six that are the, the factory store six that they're coming out with that you can get, I believe, at Dick's Sporting Goods and other sporting goods stores are an excellent way to go for the men's and the women's game, both sides. Those, it's great products, and they will throw. Uh, the warp, the 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 you, and I say this very specifically in bold letters: youth players uh, only are where I would recommend that the warp products are uh, are are something that I would say I would recommend you go and get. And this, uh, regrettably, my dear, I'm sorry, I, I can't say that for for young women. I do not recommend the warp. The ball floats all over the place. Uh, I would more say getting something that's factory strong. Under Armour does a great job. Under Armour and Gate are at a partnership. At any Under Armour head or Gate head as you go see it, I, I highly recommend you go see it. All of their uh, factory strong sticks come with a lax pocket. Gary, uh, the Gate brothers own the company Lax Pocket. Whether you can buy the lax pocket separately to put into any women's head, but all of their factory strong ones come with it in it. And I would recommend that uh, as, as a fantastic, it's not the cheapest option, I get that and I understand, but this is, I'm just saying as far as performance and giving young women a, uh, an option that is going to perform well and is going to let them have fun and let them be able to throw and, and, and catch properly and not have to worry about balancing an egg on a spoon, sorry again, uh, it, it's, that is what I would recommend. I, I say, I don't say that the, the warp is good for Older players, uh, at least in the men's game specifically, and in the women's. Uh, for all the women here who watched any of the, the WPLL games this summer, how many of you saw, especially in the first couple of weeks, all, most of the players using the work, the ball going all over the place? The only women in the WPLL who were allowed to use something else was, were, were ladies that had uh, contracts with specific, other specific companies. You didn't already have, you weren't a, an SDX pro player, you weren't allowed to use an SDX stick and you had to use the warp. And in the first couple of weeks, it, it, it hurt my heart because I, I want to see good lacrosse and I can see uh, women that are thinking about what they're doing because they're using something they've never used before. Uh, on the men's side, all of the, the elite warps, like it's a really cool product. I don't think it's where it needs to be just yet. And unless you are Rob Pinnell and you get to go to Michigan and go to Warp City, they literally make one for you on the spot tuned to your specific mechanics and play style, I don't recommend it. There are a number of options for it. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I would. it's much cheaper to buy ahead and have it strung specifically for you for you or for one of your players than to go and, and pay for one of the, the Elite Warp series that I just, I've thrown with them. They do throw. I, I just, I don't recommend it for men that are playing at higher levels. Uh, some of the materials. Heads uh, are, are some heads better for some positions? Yes. Uh, to some degree, it's marketing. I think the same thing on, on the women's side. For the women specifically, there are a, a number of heads that are set up specifically like for elite defenders. Uh, some of the sticks, uh, there's, in the women's game, I would recommend offensive sticks for any player on the field. They are so close in shape. Uh, I, I, and, there, it's kind of negligible, but from a performance standpoint, a number of the defensive-minded heads are more difficult to string because the sidewalls are thicker to be sturdier, and you cannot have as good as a pocket. You cannot have uh, set up a pocket or a sweet spot, as we all, as I mentioned. It, it's more difficult to have that where it's defined and there's enough hold the ball will stay where the player wants it to uh, under duress while you are playing. And on the men's side as well, uh, the best way that I, can, I find to put it is that some heads are better for certain pocket shapes and play styles than others. Uh, I would not recommend that a defenseman who likes to pick off passes use a very narrow uh, head that would be set up for offensive players. Uh, and conversely, and I know I, I get crazy looks sometimes, I think uh, on, on the men's game, if I'm a crease attackman, my job is to catch and finish, <coughs> I, I, I recommend using wider bigger defensive heads because the bigger the head is, the more open the face, the more you're going to catch the ball. And it's, it's, it's not a huge difference, but I'm, I'm thinking about like, you know, tenths of individual uh, degree percentage points in, as far as increasing performance. For shafts, uh, shafts are, have gotten, gotten super duper expensive and then they've come back a little bit, but 
I think the most important thing from a performance standpoint is finding something that feels good in your hands, uh, finding out what grip or texture you like, what, sh what literal shape of the shaft you like. Those are the things that I think that are most important. It needs to be light enough and strong enough to play the way that you want to play and, but, and, and feel comfortable in your hands. There's so many different options from so many manufacturers. Everyone should be able to find something that they love. Uh, mesh specifically is something that uh, has, is probably the biggest thing that's changed, especially how in the women's game it's only a couple of years now that women have been able to use mesh. It's open, uh, well specifically in the last number, I say 10 years, because before that, uh, from, uh, at least in the men's game, you had hard and soft. You didn't have, you, you, there was some monster mesh, but there wasn't a whole lot of choice that you had for what you could use. Uh, and more specifically in the last like three, four, five years, there's a number of different companies that have been making mesh that is absolutely, uh, it's fantastic and it's unbelievable and what you can do with it is amazing and the, the opportunities and, and potential for high performance are, are, are excellent. Uh, the Mesh Dynasty, String King, East Coast Dyes, STX, uh, Throne, Gemalax, Lax Run, there's a number of others. Uh, I would trust all of those and I put those into sticks of the players that I use and people that send sticks to me regularly. As I said at the very beginning about performance, if, if someone sends me a head and they give me a piece of mesh that I do not trust that will perform, I, I have plenty of mesh. I would gladly trade out something like that, tell them that I'm going to do so, I will return it to them if they, the piece of mesh that they like, but I, I just, I can't, I, literally, I will lose sleep if I know that, I do lose sleep knowing that there are players out there that are using sticks that, that won't change their life. Uh, a, a whole bunch of this stuff, the Mesh Dynasty, as I said at the beginning, uh, for anybody who came in late, all of these sticks are up here for show and tell, and then after we finish, please come up and, and check them out if you have questions. I want to answer all those questions, but a number of these these sticks that have all the fun colors uh, for both the men's and women's game now, you can have multicolored mesh in college. For a long time, you could have one single color. You could have yellow mesh, but you can have any other colors. You can have red and white. Uh, even if it was just you get you dyed half the piece of mesh. It used to be illegal in the men's game. But the Mesh Dynasty uh, and, a, and a bunch of these other uh, mesh companies, we owe, uh, guys like myself owe everything and I think the lacrosse community as a whole owes so much to this crazy old man in the desert in, in Arizona who has forgotten and thrown away more mesh than we'll ever see in our entire life and th that's the same guy who's, who's making stuff from the mesh dynasty and it's, it's incredible it's fantastic the color is is absolutely lovely uh, and you'll be able to see that for some of the, these things up here but mesh is it, the stuff that they're doing with it and continuing to do with it uh, at least for me is very exciting uh, maintenance and upkeep. Generally, this falls upon the player. Um, players, by their extension, the team's performance relies on how well their stick performs, as I have been uh, discussing. It is part of the coach's role to make sure they are talking to their players and saying that, hey, you need to make sure, even if you don't know anything about six or eight, it's fine. But be able to say, you should be paying attention to your sticks, telling them they need to look at their knots, telling them they need to make sure that everything is operating correctly and looking at on that on a regular basis. Uh, uh, to me, the, from the maintenance goes hand in hand with upkeep, as I was talking about with uh, going back to the person who strung it. I, if you have to go back all the time, maybe it's time to either go to somebody else or try a different setup so that you don't have to continually going back to somebody uh, to get it maintained or fixed. Uh, you're not able to string, you do, the players are not going to be able to string themselves, but if they care about playing and executing a high level, they should be able to at the very least know how to make adjustments and know how to maintain it and uh, have good upkeep. There are uh, something that you should be making your players aware of uh, is paying attention to where the strings will fray in the head. Uh, in my kit, I believe I have it up here, I, I, keep a, I have a little bag that I keep all of my tools in. Uh, I keep a, a bottle and I recommend this for every coach here for men's and women's across. Uh, how, here, quick one, another question. How many of you have ever seen a player who uh, has come up to you in practice and said, um, Coach, uh, my sidewall broke. Yes, exactly. And they expect you to, it's just magically, they think you're going to fix it, you're going to do something. Uh, I always ask, where's your backup? How many of you, okay, another question. How many of you have players that show up to practice every day, they only bring one step? Wow, yes. Uh, another recommendation, if, if you can't, if, if there's a situation where players, maybe they can't afford it, they, don't, they, they can't get a second stick, certainly that's understandable. Uh, I, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to recommend if there's any way that they can have two, 
I, should say, I, I, I want to say that they should have two. Uh, they should have one that should be their gamer and one that their backup. That both and both should operate at the, at the same highest level. If they want to play at a high level, they should have a backup stick that they can break their first one, go pick up the second one, and not have to worry about how it works. And, and I'll be the first person to say that I played games. The first game my junior year in college, the first game that I started, I scored two goals. Uh, the first goal, I literally I, I hit it off the shaft. Uh, the second one, I batted it off somewhere up here. I didn't, did ball didn't hit the mesh. I hit it off the head. I just, I cut, ball got thrown to me, and I just threw my stick at it. The stick that I was using, I could not throw two passes to the same spot. It was wet that day. I'm sure I had strung my stick. I had not broken it in properly. It threw, like, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. I could not throw a, a pass to save my life. I still managed to score two goals. My coaches are all high me. I scored no goals. <laughs> I'm telling you right now as a coach, I believe I was wrong, and I think it's important, and everything that I'm saying here today is about like making sure your, your kids have sticks that are going to throw and have a backup that will work just as well. Uh, the, I keep a bottle of clear nail polish, not for my nails, but specifically to be able to put it on the mesh, or specifically on the string where the, the string frays. And typically it's at one of two spots. It's either on the, uh, the back side of the scoop that gets ground away as they're picking up ground balls. Uh, a lot of the heads now have some sort of uh, design where the, the, they don't get scraped up as much. But specifically on the inside where the ball is going to rub against the, uh, the, the string on the inside of the head. Once, you have a, once a player or myself or my players, they have a, a setup that they like, I'll put, it on the, I'll put the nail polish on the string. To, it, just, it greatly extends the lifespan of the string, and there's a few things that are more aggravating than a, a sidewall popping on a stick that you are absolutely in love with. Uh, checking nuts, that's, a, that's another thing. Most specifically, where's something with a shooter? So, if a stick was strung, strung properly, all the nuts for the top string, the sidewall, down here at the bottom string, these should, or at least, the, the, the sidewall strings, these should probably, if they were pulled tight, they should probably stay tight. These usually don't come undone uh, very often. If the, if the string is tiny and the nut is small and the holes in the sidewall are big, sometimes the nut will go through the hole and that will change the way things feel and change the tension, how it's strung. So not, those knots need to be maintained, and in some cases they need to be literally big enough so they're not being pulled through and everything stays as consistent as long as possible. Uh, for shooters, shooters and bottom strings are typically the things that will come undone more often. Uh, I highly encourage, as I've said, everyone to come up and look. This is how I. Uh, what did I do? This is how I, I. I don't really know the name of the knot. I don't know really how to describe it, but I encourage you to come up and take a look at it at the end. I tie all of my shooters in a certain way because when the ball, every time the ball comes out, it's stretching the shooter and it's pulling that knot tight up to the plastic. And this depends upon how loose or how tight the shooter is. But the sh if the shooters are coming undone, it's going to dramatically, depending on how well, how much your shooter's having an impact on the shape of the pocket, it will dramatically impact how the ball comes out and when you're throwing, where the ball goes. Um, after wet weather, the, another important thing. Don't, this is for uh, both men's wounds across. Guys that have if you have kids that have a big bag, don't, if they, especially if it's wet weather and it's gross and it's muddy out, if you're playing on grass, don't let a wet, disgusting stick that looks like this go into a player's bag. Okay, I know you, if it's, if it's not your son or not your daughter and they're going, to, they're going to somebody else, make sure that you're telling this at practice that when they get home, take the stick out of the bag. If it's muddy, take it in the shower, take it in the sink, wash it off. Try to get as much of the dirt out of there, make, it, make sure it's clean and then put the, your hand through the back of the stick to make it form the shape of the pocket that it's supposed to look like, and then let it dry somewhere. It is going to shrink a little bit. The mesh and the string will shrink up a little bit, so making sure you're either using your hand to press and try and stretch it out a little bit. If you have a, a baseball bat, a wiffle ball bat, anything like that laying around, be able to do this to be able to stretch it back out to where the pocket wants to be is an important thing to do. That takes a second or two before you go out for the next time you play a uh, practice or a game. And wall ball will do it, shooting will do it, but that's not something that should be thought of, paid attention to after you play wet wet. Uh, there are two main adjustments that need to be paid attention to if a stick is throwing in a certain kind of way. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, talking about how I don't like talking about whip, I say, how, how is it easy to use? And then is the ball thrown high or low? Is it coming out early or is it coming out late? There are two specific adjustments with the shooting strings and with your bottom string that you need to be able to make or you need to be able to hopefully do because a lot of, some of you, how many of you are coaching uh, young men and women who are under 10? Okay, so there's a lot of them that are going to be like, <laughs> they're going to come to you and be, help, I don't know what to do. So these are some things, even if you don't know how to string, and I'm coming down into the middle, so hopefully this is a little bit easier for everyone to be able to see. Uh, even if you don't know how to string, these are some things that you can do. If the stick is throwing high, if I'm standing and I'm trying to get it to where it's going and it's sailing over your target, throwing or if it's going over the goal if you're trying to shoot, that probably means that I, I, most often this happens when the knots on a stick, uh, when the knots on the shooting strings have come undone. Okay, so you look to gradually tighten it. As I've seen many of you have taken pictures, please take pictures of that if you have not already done so. Uh, you want to gradually try and figure out how to tighten, and I say gradually, like one of the things that I, I've, uh, a phrase that I've tried to coin, millimeters or miles, when it comes to, if I make, like, I'm making millimeter changes here, it can go long, it, it has much bigger difference than how tiny a change that you made, much, much bigger difference of how the stick can and will throw. So. Uh, if it's throwing too high, tighten the shooters or gradually and tiny loosen the bottom string down here. On this stick specifically, that, uh, if I can kind of, hopefully you can kind of see the colors are not very good. If you see at the very bottom of this stick, the, the, there's a, a good amount of area, the string, there's enough string there that I can either pull it in tight to, to deep, but to make the pocket shallower, or I can let it out to make it a little bit deeper. If a ball, if the stick is throwing high, if there's a stick that throws high and it has no shooting strings, the first thing I would do is loosen the bottom string. Conversely, if the stick is throwing down, you want to try and loosen the, the shooting strings, it, it, just tiny little adjustments, or tighten the bottom string. If the stick is throwing down, which is more often the case when it gets wet, or if there's someone, <coughs> raise your hand if you ever heard someone say that my stick is bagged out. <coughs> Uh, if you haven't yet, you probably will. Um, it, if the stick is throwing down, it's a little bit easier to diagnose. And this is something that I like doing, and I do it for ever. Anytime I get a stick, I, for these sticks that are in here, I did it for yours yesterday. Any of the other ones that I see, I, want, I, I go like this all the time. I don't have to look at it. I just use the back of my hand, the back of my fingers, to feel how this just this is an expression of how the ball comes out. I can understand how the ball, how a stick is probably going to throw by doing this. I've done it thousands and thousands of times. Compared to that one. Compared to which one? The white one right there, the white on white. You will just like how you were doing that. Like how do you know the difference between that one and that one? So as you go through it and you feel that, right? I know exactly what you're talking about. But how do you know, because that looks like it has more whip, am I right? Or, or it should throw a little lower than that one? It might, but it, it's, this is exactly why I, I there's not enough time. You don't like the whip. I can literally explain the differences in, in I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain what I know by doing this. I just I know what I'm. I know what I'm feeling, and I know how it's going to throw because I've done it enough. But this, especially now that I've, I've got this one because it has shooting strings in it, I'll go like this, and I can be. Usually, you can do this, and even if you don't know what you're doing, if you feel one of these shooters or if there's one specific spot where you're like, you 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 feel like, oh my god, that's really tight. I understand why that stick is throwing down right now, you know which one, if there's one specific one that's tight, you'll know which one to loosen. Uh, with, uh, if they're, and especially if it's still throwing down, tightening the bottom string. If the pocket is too deep, tighten the bottom string. If the, if the stick is throwing a little bit down but it's not a shooter issue, tighten the bottom string to see what you can do. I, I encourage you to, with a stick of your own or with any of your player sticks that let you kind of experiment with it, try it out. Try it out. Feel it, do this with one of your sticks uh, when you get home, or do it with sticks when you hopefully get to go to FanFest a little bit later today. Uh, some things to remember. Uh, many of you have probably heard, I, I, some of you have probably heard it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. Has anyone ever heard that? I don't like that because the arrow represents the ball and it doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, for it's not the one, it's the wizard. I fully believe that. And what I've never heard anyone else say, but what I tagged, or what I have started saying uh, for anybody in here uh, that's a, a total movie nerd like me, uh, if you've ever watched uh, Harry Potter 3, remember when Ron Weasley broke his wand, 
Uh, if the wizard wand is broken, there will be no magic show today. It doesn't matter who it is. If, if Gary Gate uses a bad stick, he is going to be limited in what he's capable of doing, regardless of the fact that he's the greatest player of all time. Um, hold is in the hands. And that is uh, attributed much to... It, it is, it's, yes, it's not the wand, it's the wizard, but it, there are sticks. This is more specifically for uh, our, our box players and our, our Canadian Northern Brethren. They play a game indoors, and anybody that went to the, who went to the Wings game last night? Awesome. It would blow your mind if you got to put your hands into the sticks of the guys who were using how, how rudimentary and simple their pockets are. And that's because that the indoor game is so much more important. You have one exceptional stick skills, but that the ball can come out of your stick easily. Most of these sticks that you see here are more so specifically for the field game, and would not the, the guys that played last night would not touch them with a ten foot pole because it's not easy enough to get the ball out of them. Uh, football and basketball and hockey, I want lacrosse to be on that same level. It's going to take a long time to get there, but I think it's a worthy thought. Uh, so, some concepts that hopefully uh, I, I touched upon and we're not quite done yet, but uh, everyone can have a great stick. Everyone should have a great stick. Uh, why so many players don't, uh, there's just there's not enough good strayers out there in, in the world. Uh, where to get a great stick, uh, there are people like me, there's, uh, do some research, Instagram, there's a ton of people, that's where I, I started posting my stuff, there's a, a, a wonderful community of people, I don't know anybody in the, in the Instagram community who posts sticks online, who isn't, uh, who would not stop what they're doing to try and help if you have questions, uh, let's see, um, how to tell if you have one, if you've got a stick that, that is awesome, you, you know, if, if I ask you, like, how do you like how your stick throws, and you're like, eh, I like it, that doesn't immediately scream to me that it's it's mind blowing, and I want to be like, how can we make it better? That's that's just my, my personal belief. Uh, what to do when you have it? As I talked about with maintenance and upkeep, um, take care. Once you have, I've got, I'm not going to name them off, but I've got like four or five sticks that I can actually remember what mesh that I was using, what head that I was using. I was like, this is the this is like the fourth or the fifth greatest stick that I ever had. 
I could do anything that I just, it opened up a whole new world for me in what I could do and what I could accomplish on the field. Uh, lastly, I know we are getting very close here, so I'm quicking this up. But if I'm sitting here and I'm talking about pounding pockets, so this is a stick that is strong. Uh, this is a factory strong goalie stick. As you can see, I have never done anything to it. I took the shooters out of it. When you are, if you are stringing sticks for people and you want to set it up so that it, uh, it operates at the highest possible level, do not put the shooters in and then pound the pocket. You want to do it without shooters because I want to actually stretch out every single piece of mesh in this stick. Now this is, as I said, this is a factory strung piece of mesh. It's a factory strung stick. I want to uh, get every single hole on the front, on the back, and we are going to see what this pocket looks like, and you guys get to tell me whether or not it's going to throw. I have never broken mesh, a stick, or a string trying to do this. Now, does that look like it might throw? Now, if I do this and I show you, does that look like it might throw? No. If you absolutely, if a stick is not going to throw, but you have to put shooting strings in it for, in order for it to operate, it was not strung properly to begin with. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. I love STX. I think they have great products. I work with them very specifically on a lot of their stuff uh, in design and implementation of mesh and different heads. I have talked to them about this. Old. I managed to find this at home. Uh, this is a piece of mesh called Ultra Mesh that didn't last very long. It breaks in extremely quickly and it just breaks down very quickly. So I took the tag off of it this morning. It has never been used. I did not string it, but for the same, the, this exact reason, I want to be able to show you what it looks like when it's strung poorly. This is not going to be easy to strung. Uh, in women's sticks, all of this applies the exact same way uh, in women's cross. It's not going to be as it's it's not going to be as easy and uh, to see because the pockets generally are not as deep. But there's a lot of sticks, and, and, and I, I any of the anyone coaching women's across from here when you go home, talk to your talk to your players, and just look at your player sticks. Imagine what they would look like. Use your, your fingers and kind of press in a little bit and, and imagine what it would be like if you took the shooters out of the stick. Most women's sticks, at least that are older women's sticks, that were made, they were strung you know, a couple of years ago and before, they're tennis rackets. And they're, they're tennis rackets. And, and that's one reason why I'm so passionate about all this and how it's even more important in the women's game because from what I have seen in the women's game, there is so much less of an understanding of how important having a well-strung stick is. Uh, this last one is a brand new product from SDX, and this mesh is what I, the, from the mesh dynasty that they had spoken to you about. Uh, I sat here, that's what the pocket looks like right now. Uh, I sat, I strung this this morning. I started at about 8 10. Uh, and this is. I have used this mesh, and I've, used, I've strung this head a bunch, but I didn't know exactly how it's going to work. But I'm sitting here and I'm doing this because I want everyone to see what, hopefully, a a well-strung stick, the difference between what the pocket looks like beforehand and what it looks like after you pound it. And this is what I was talking about all the whole time at the beginning about when I string, when I string a stick, I stretch out the mesh, I'm, this is the break-in process. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm bypassing the break-in process, I'm bypassing the bagging out process. That looks a little bit different, right? I guarantee that this will throw. Not everybody in here is going to like it, but the ball, it is not going to be a difficult process. So this doesn't fly off. Uh, it's not going to be a difficult process for somebody to catch that ball, bring it back, and the ball is going to come out of it easy. You may not like it, it may not be perfect for everyone. This would probably be much better set up to be put on a, a, a defensive shaft for a defenseman or a long stick midfielder, but everybody sees how remarkable of a difference it was for 30 seconds worth of work. Correct? The, the reason why I use a bat and I don't use, uh, many of you have probably seen that little like foot long pocket pounder that comes on a shaft and has a, has a little cross ball that's like, screwed into it. Uh, the first one of these I, I made out of a, uh, 
wanted like a post or a, a stairway. I drilled a hole in the top. I drilled a hole in a, in a shiny lacrosse ball, and I put a bolt through it. And that worked great until I did it so much that I wore all of the shiny stuff off, and half the ball was uh, tacky and new, and then the bottom half, which I didn't touch, was still shiny. Uh, so I moved on to, to baseball bats because it's easy, they're easy to manipulate. I can just keep it right there, and I can press down. If you're not pressing down hard enough to stretch the mesh out, it's then how much it gets spread, how much you didn't do is what, where it's going to bag out through it. Uh, so I, I would feel confident that this is, it's, like, as I said, it's going to change. When it gets wet, it's not going to be exactly the same. But I'm shooting for trying to make it so that the change between right now dry or as opposed to even hot and humid, things will start to stretch out and bag out or when it gets downright wet. Uh, what do we got for time? How are we doing? 9.33. I started at 8.30. I went a little bit longer, but I like to talk. Uh, and hopefully, I've been able to, everyone's been able to pick up that this is something that I'm very passionate about. If you have questions, please stay. I want to, there's a few minutes in between. I will go out in the hallway after and answer any questions that anyone has. Uh, if, you, if you did not get one of my business cards, please come up, grab one. I would like... I would love it if everyone could fill out a uh, form for me. You guys go to the QR code or at the very top of top right hand of the home page of my website. There is a link for uh, a survey. I would love to know how you feel about the presentation and if you have any more questions.